first of all, I really, I love the fact that you are so young and wonderful and like my colleague, the energy is fantastic. So I really appreciate you coming and honoring us with your presence, thank you. And I, of course, thank the hate talks and looking down because I have to make sure saying so thank you so much, I really appreciate that. And um, you know, they said, we said, how should we prepare? And it was a last minute thing and they said, just bring your heart, they speak from your heart. And so that was great. Uh, we were not supposed to prepare anything. And then, of course, I mean, God forbid, I'm not going to comment because how do you, I, I was supposed to comment what uh, my friend is speaking, but how do you comment when somebody is speaking from the heart? I related to everything that she was saying. It's pure and beautiful. And there's nothing to comment, but only just to congratulate her with a great woman. But two things I would like to say, though. This is what a leader looks like from that region. And that, this is really what kills the stereotype. Everything you read, everything you see, everything that you have heard about women who are wearing their beautiful scarves, live in Afghanistan or any Arab region or any, you know, uh, you know, of the countries in the Middle East. I wouldn't say just Muslim. I'm sure you guys are expecting us a Muslim woman, no? Because many different people live and the culture expands beyond Islam. Many women you'll see wearing are not necessarily Muslim. So um, that, uh, this is what a leader looks like. And to me, the definition of a leader is not just a woman who wears high heels like me today, <laughs> and trying to get used to it, but a leader is someone who reflects her community. And I think in the West, a lot of times when we bring women and we bring them here and they look like us and they speak our language and we're so excited, it's like, oh, look at this woman, she's so liberal. How did she ever come from Somalia or Afghanistan? And, really be so normal. Do you see what I mean? And that's so incorrect. Because a woman leader to me, and my definition, is someone who looks, uh, who, who, who behaves and talks and has the passion for her community. Because it's that woman they will relate to. It's that woman that will change them. So to me, this is a real leader of our country. <laughs> Number one. Number two. The issue of refugees is one that we are all concerned. We see, ton and, and it just breaks my heart because I have two boys. You see people packed, you know, we talk about the slavery, we, the image we have and what we have read about the slavery was people packed at the bottom of, uh, of a ship on top of each other with chains. Today is a slavery, there is a slavery, but it's a different kind. When people leave, don't ever believe people left there. I, you know, I've been living in American in the States for a long time. I never took American passport. Not because I love that country, because it's my second country, but because I want to hold on. The last time I was in Somalia, it was a beautiful country. And, my, and when my parents sent me to the States, I was there to study. I don't know why I'm talking about this. I was supposed to speak to something, but anyway, I guess you have that trick. You say, speak from your heart, and the things come. OK. <laughs> but when I was sent there, I was sent to go to school and come back to Somalia and live there. And I'm still waiting for it. And let's just say it was over 20 some years. I'm still waiting, holding on to. So everyone is not looking to come to Europe or to the States and to change and to love and to, not at all. I never had, it's only when I go to Somalia that I see, and, and I love and honor all the countries I lived in. But it's only that place that the food smells different, the tea is different, the looks is different, the passion is different, crying and sorrow is different, because it's my country, you see? And, and I want to hold on to that. I, I was one of the few lucky ones, I have to be honest, I did not go through everything you went through. It's only when I go through um, uh, immigration. And, you know, even though if a foreign ministry invited me or I'm seeing the president, it doesn't matter because I have a Somali passport, I have to be treated differently. <laughs> so uh, you would have to wait for my book, it's called Passport, Passport. <laughs> and I always make a point of if I have any time, I just would, you know, stand somewhere and, and see who, I have 10 minutes, sorry. Okay, just uh, stop me. But um, I always make sure and I talk to the person I think who's being treated in any airport. I'm like, oh, so what's happening? Where are you from? Nigeria, where are you from? This, where are you? And of course, they're always young Muslim guys, you know. I'm like, okay, so what did you do? But the point is, um, so don't ever think. I want you, when you see refugees or immigrants, look at them differently. Because once upon a time, those refugees that you see coming in Medusa, packed in a despicable 
live in despicable centers and coming in despicable uh, uh, boats or whatever it is. Those were people, they were somebody's daughters and husbands and children. Look at them differently. Look at them differently. Once upon a time, she was a refugee going to Pakistan, packed in an old car. At that moment, she didn't know where she was going or where she was heading. She was somebody's daughter. All of these issues that you see, Syria, and try to personalize it, that would have been you, because all of those people, once upon a time, they had homes and neighbors and friends and sisters. They were somebody's wives. They dressed beautifully and smelled great and ate great food once upon a time. Always keep that image when you see people being mistreated. Think about them. You know, it could be you. Um, so to me, again, this is, you know, this is what I would say for someone like that. The third thing I would like to add is she didn't get stuck. She moved on and went back to her country so that she can contribute. I just want you to know, never lose who you are. And you should always be a reflection of your own community. Don't ever take ideas that are alien to anybody. Just be yourself. And, and, and once you lose and detach yourself from your own community, then you really cannot make any difference. Not to, if you cannot make it to yourself, you can't make it to anybody else. So be who you are.